Stay tuned, I show how to color these pretty eyes later in the video. Hi, it's Dia. Today I'm gonna to be using Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils, and I'm gonna be talking about the top five colored pencil blending mistakes and how you can avoid them. The first mistake that I can think of is pushing too hard with your pencils too fast. Coloring with colored pencils is so fun, but colored pencil is a slow medium. Almost all paper has some kind of tooth to it, meaning there's, there's a bit of texture on it, unless it's the, the, the most very smooth bristle or like a shiny cover paper that's coated, which isn't really meant to be drawn on. If you push too hard with a colored pencil, you actually smooth out that tooth. And that tooth is important because it helps your paper accept layers. So in this image, I used obviously a turquoise and a rosy pink. And the, the blending in the center really doesn't work. There's a huge line of demarcation, as you could see. So I'm gonna show you when you use a softer touch and you use layers, it takes a longer time, but you'll get better results. You'll actually be able to blend two colors like this that are very different. As you can see, there's no line of demarcation in the center. Even when you go back and you add several layers, it's a gentle, gradual effect rather than a line down the middle with a blue over here and a pink over there. Plus, if you push very hard, it's very hard, if not impossible, to go over that area with any more colored pencil, unless you blend it with Gamsol or another mineral spirit product, and I'll talk that I'll talk more about that later. But sometimes that doesn't even work because the tooth of the paper is flat. It's now glossy. So if you try to blend colors or have one fade into another, if you press very hard, that line of demarcation is always going to be there. If you use lighter layers and gradually allow the colors to build up and fade into one another, you'll have a lovely gradient and no lines that show where one color starts and one color stops. I'm going to show through this video an example of this with this picture from one of my coloring books called Everyday Magic. Which leads me to mistake number two, which is rushing. And not that working quickly is innately bad in and of itself, but if you're just trying to get through it, meaning you're just trying to get the picture done or, or this big area done, your lines can look messy and it can affect your results. So take your time, enjoy what you're doing. If you have the supplies and you have the time to create art, I would consider it a gift and enjoy every minute of it. So not only do you get that benefit of enjoying it, but the results will be so much better. As you can see here, I'm adding layers of yellow, cantaloupe, green, and you can't tell right now, but there are many, many layers going, going down. And if you push too hard in the beginning, or if you rush, you won't get the same results. And you can't tell right now what this is going to look like at the end, but it'll be a big difference. And I will compare a single layer and this same eye with many layers a little bit later in the video. Now, the third mistake is not layering at all. If you try and fill an entire area with only one color, it has a tendency to look flat. Adding different shades and even different colors adds dimension and interest to your image, like I'm doing here. 
every time I add a color, it looks like a, a little dot here, a little line here, but it all adds to the finished results. Don't be afraid to add a variety of colors. Just because, for instance, this eye is green, doesn't mean you can't add many other different colors. Look at a human eye. Look at your own eye in the mirror. You'll Even if it's the darkest brown, you'll see different colors. It's, it's actually pretty amazing. Even skin tone. You think somebody has peach or brown or beige skin. No one's face is only one color. And if we look around in nature, it's amazing to see all the colors, even in the tiniest blade of grass. So look around, see what you can add to your art. Any type of art is very visual. So become an expert at observing what is around you. You'll not only improve your art, but you'll improve your life. And mistake number four isn't really a mistake, and it can be something that can be adjusted very quickly. And that's layering, but with too little product. So you can see here that I'm putting down a really, really light layer. Um, as we know, layering helps add dimension to our work. And if we don't put enough color on the paper, the blending tools won't work properly. And there are many ways to blend. You can use a white pencil. You can use a colorless uh, pencil. You can use mineral spirits. Um, and they all work. And I'll be doing a video about that soon. But my favorite is Gamsol. So I put some on my cotton swab. And you can see that there's not even enough. And, and, and I did wipe it off. And you can see that there's not enough product to prevent the paper from just absorbing. And I tried to do it with a brush too, and you can see all that really happens is that the paper gets very saturated and you wasted a little product and a little bit of time, no big deal. So here you can see that I used the same colors and I did the same thing with a Q-tip. I dipped it into a little bit of, I don't remember if it was Gamsol or Turpinoid, but I very lightly went over the top. And you can see that it just very easily blends together. And I'll show you a picture in two seconds where, of what it looks like when it's dry. Then you can go back in with more colored pencil and add more layers. Mistake number five is always going in the same direction with your colored pencils. Back to our pink and aqua. I'm going in a different direction now. The first layer, I went vertically, up and down. And now I'm going back in horizontally. I'm using kind of big, ovally strokes. And as you can see, when you go in different directions, it I don't know what it actually, I was gonna say it cancels out the other layer. It doesn't really cancel it out, but it, it adds another texture to it and it doesn't enhance or highlight the direction that you've already gone in. And that also leads me to this. If you hold the pencil too close to the point, kind of like you do when you write, it's a little harder to control. So here I pulled back a little bit and it automatically makes the pencil, uh, it makes you draw at a different angle. So it allows more of the side of the pencil to be used and the results are much smoother. Here are those two colors blended together with no terpenoid or Gamsol or any other method. So what I'm gonna do now is use a white pencil just to show you what that does. Oh, here's a third layer and I'm going sort of on a diagonal. So that's another direction that you can add. Now I'm going to use my Luminance White. I love this pencil for blending. I'm going to sharpen it.
and then go over the top. And as you can see, it does lighten it a little bit. And it does slightly flatten the tooth of the paper. But it also gives a different effect. It's beautiful, it softens it up. And if it softens it up too much, you can go in when you're done with the colors that you used and brighten those colors up a little bit. There's no stark demarcation line in the center and the colors just gradually fade into one another in a really pretty soft way. So that's another option for blending. You can also use a colorless blender and I am gonna do another video about all the different options um, and it's similar to this. It does flatten the tooth of the paper a little bit, but there's less of a muting effect. It doesn't soften it as much. In some cases, you want it to happen, and in some cases, you definitely don't. So it's nice that there are those options out there. I wanted to go back to the darker colors for a second because the turpenoid dried, and I wanted to show you that you can go over the top and use the mineral spirits for other things. You can blend the colors like we talked about. Um, and if there's enough product on the paper, you can move small amounts of the pigment to different areas of your piece. Um, make sure you try this first because the results are different on different surfaces. You can lighten up a color to a point. You don't wanna smear it around too much. Um, but you can almost blot a little bit, and I'll give you an example now. I'm putting some turpenoid or gamsol on a Q-tip, and you can see that you can remove some of the color that you put down. Once again, try it. You don't know what it's gonna do on different sur surfaces. You don't wanna do it on an important piece that you haven't practiced on first. Make sure you have enough color down first. You don't have to push hard. You just have to, you know, do the layering thing and be neat and take your time. And then use the mineral spirits to, to blend the area. You can also use a stump or a tortillion. That's a tinier brush. I just wanted to see and show you um, what you can do with, oh, that's an example right there of moving the pigment so a little bit of pigment does come off on the brush and you can use that on other areas of your of your piece so back to the cat i just wanted to show you what the eyes ended up looking like i didn't use turpenoid here or even a blender but i did use many many layers of colors and I used the lighter color, which in this case was a golden yellow, to blend. I really don't know how many layers it ended up to be because like this color, this aqua, this dark aqua color or teal, I didn't go over the entire area. That's one of the nice things about colored pencils too. The points can be very, very sharp and you can get very extreme detail with them. These are polychromos pencils. They're known for being able to accept a lot of layers. They're an oil-based product, and I am gonna introduce a new product either next week or the week after. That's probably going to surprise some of you. Oh, you know, I threw some orange in the eye there and uh, added a little bit of a shadow underneath the top lid because if the light source is coming from above, anyone's eye will have a slight shadow from the overhang of the lid. So to quickly review, pushing too hard too fast, rushing, layering with too little product, not layering at all, and always coloring in the same direction are probably the biggest problems that somebody that uses coloring, I'm sorry, colored pencils can face. 
And uh, once you know about them, they're really, really easy to correct. And you can move forward and not get stuck in their little snares. So the colors that I used on this very cute kitty eye are Naples yellow. That's that nice golden yellow. That orange little bit that I threw in there was scarlet red. The pretty turquoise was cobalt green. I love this color. The warm gray three is what I used for all of the shading under the lid and even on some of his fur that I really didn't show. Maybe I'll do a video of that if you want to see it. I did use a neutral green, here we go, around the perimeter of his eye. Green, yellow, you know, it's hard to read polychromos pencils because they're in gold. Olive green, yellowish. Oh, and there's one of my favorite polychromos pencils, cinnamon. I colored his ear. I just want to show you the difference between a one colored eye and a many layered eye. Hold on. Okay, there's his pretty eyes up close. And here is an eye, although it's a beautiful color, you can see it's much less dimensional. It looks flatter, it looks a little more cartoony. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just not the style that I was going for. You can see that the other eye actually looks like the, the, it, it, it has shape to it. It almost looks curved, um, big difference. So here's those eyes up close with all the different layers. Looks like an iris. So thank you so much for watching. This was a fun video. I'm going to introduce a new blending product next week that'll probably surprise some of you. And that's about it right now. Um, I hope you subscribe to me and maybe give me a like or a share if you like the video. Thank you so much. I hope you're all staying safe out there and uh, I will see you soon. Bye.